Chris Mitchell, GMB Trade Union, proudly standing outside. As you can see, the Admiral Bar, <laughs> to the cradle to the grave, the guard in the working class. I've heard so many stories in there about working class people. Tell them it's like they've on the picket lines, but it's like they've on the strike, but it's like they're in the workplace. Um, absolutely, so many stories I'm hearing, absolutely horror stories. But as a moment is to fight, a moment is to continue to campaign, as a moment is to continue to support each other. This is our working class war that we will win by standing together. So, fantastic night, absolutely inspirational speakers in there. Chris Mitchell, solidarity, brothers and sisters, and hold the line. Yes. Hi there, I'm Jackie Church. I am a principal teacher and a proud EIS activist. I have been a teacher for 12 years. Um, can I just say, first of all, I haven't got this written down. I've got to make a thank you and an apology. My thank you is to my colleagues over there who bought me a drink to set up my nerves, so thanks very much, guys. <laughs> um, and my apology is I'm so sorry. I do have a notepad. I'm a teacher. I can't help it. Um, first thing I want to say is what a privilege it is to be in this room or a pub, should I say, um, <laughs> with all the, these people that have finally stood up to this government and said, enough is enough. Do you know what I mean? Um, my name is Jackie Church. During the school hours, I am a social worker, a, a health professional, a parent. I'll not lie to you, a punching bag as well. Uh, sometimes a teacher. Out with those school hours, though, I'm utterly exhausted. On that picket line, um, I'm often asked by the media, by public, why are you striking? Do you know I'm never asked that by parents? That's because they know I'm striking for their future and the future of those families. I'm going to go a wee bit closer. Um, the other thing that I really wanted to talk to you about is why I'm striking for those children. This is quite sad and I make no apologies for it. But I am striking for the children who can't concentrate in my class because they're starving. They haven't had a meal since yesterday lunchtime in the school canteen. I am striking for those children in my class who beg me to keep their jackets on because there's no heating in the house. That's a scandal. This cost of living crisis is unacceptable. I didn't cause it. The children didn't cause it. You didn't cause it. But we're the ones that are suffering. It's just not on. I am striking for my teachers. We have not had a pay rise in, this is what I will have to check my notes for. I've got a countdown here. <laughs> 355 days, six hours, 39 minutes and 10 seconds. I'm striking for my colleagues who are struggling with their food and their energy bills. I know teachers that are now using food banks, who have got second jobs, with the overwhelming workload we've got, everybody's exhausted. Teacher burnout is real, and I see it firsthand. We cannot function on zero energy. Most of all, this education system cannot function on goodwill alone, and that's what's happening. I'm striking for that education system that is going to be decimated by these cuts Glasgow City Council are proposing. No specialist services, reduced time, in a classroom, and worst of all, teachers. I got a phone call from my friend saying, Daily Record headline, is that true? That must be, must be exaggerating. No, it's a fact. That's how many teachers are going to lose their jobs. That is scary. My job is to raise attainment. Quite rightly so, that's the challenge they set me. How am I going to do that when people are leaving that profession in their droves? They can't afford it. The job security. There's no permanent posts. Who in their right mind is going to stay in a job where they can't protect the future of those families? And do you know what's scary? See the amount of children that will have missed out and actually having these quality teachers that would change their futures. And we all know some of those futures would be bleak. Most importantly, I'm striking for this room. I have met the most incredible people on those picket lines who support me. Social media, they're there for us. We're all together. It's not my strike, it's everybody's strike, and we're all doing this together. The teachers want to thank you for your inspiration. We weren't first, but we we're certainly there because of you. And finally, I am striking not only for the pay rise, so that every striking public sector worker gets the recognition that they deserve. It's so, so important. Thank you and solidarity. Just been up there. I'm just a postman. That's my job. I'm just a postman. 
Ja, to... Alo, ki bolj! Konja pozdi spoj. Deli čez, your teachers, your fire brigade people. I want to see the pros. I want to see them. But they're your real heroes. They're your real heroes. They're your real heroes. All I'm as a community service person. That's what I do. My job is in the community. I don't do anything else. And most of the poses, all we do is work in the community. And we work with the community. Anyway, <clears throat> the biggest problem we've got now is most of the people that are here are right up for what we're doing. They're, they're going back us no matter what. We need to get the voices out there towards other people. We need to get it out to them. You hear them out there. The good thing about being a postman is you hear off the, the normal folk, the people that live in the community, and they'll tell you, we're back, we're here for you. The thing is, this service goes, we're all gone. There are 115,000 people that work in the post office, and we're getting pushed to the limit just now. Uh, you heard, I don't know if anybody's seen Simon Thompson on the, the parliamentary committee, yes. and he was talking about the PDAs. And tracking. I came back from work today. Now I've just worked six days this week. I start at half five in the morning and I'm working right through to two o'clock. I do anything between 16 and 20 miles a day. I claim the equivalent of four Empire State Builders every single day. Fat as fuck. <laughs> it, means, it means nothing, right? It means nothing. <clears throat> and these guys are saying you're not doing enough. I come back to work after I finish my shift today and as soon as I walked in, my man's got a hold of me. Pulled me out of the office. And says, uh, what have you been doing? What are you talking about? Where, where have you been? Your last track showed that you were scanning at 20 past 12. Don't even fucking me, sorry. <laughs> My wife told me not to swear. <laughs> sorry, honey. I'm getting leathered. <laughs> so, they says, uh, what have you been doing for the last hour? I says, deliver mail. No, nah, I'm not having this. I'm going to speak to your colleague. This is on you go. So he went out and he put, took, grabbed my colleague and took him into another office. This is happening today. What have you been doing since 20 past 12? Deliver mail. But your last scan showed it was at 20 past 12. Right, that was the last parcel, but I still have letters to deliver. Ah, you're fucking singing up. He did say that, that was me, I'm quoting. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes, eh, your last scan showed you it was at 20 past 12, so what the fuck have you been doing since then? I mean, anyway, I'm quite a, I get angst. If I need to say something, I've got to say something. And unfortunately, it's cost me my job a few times. My wife will, Verify that. If I'm being wronged, I tend to speak out, but again, I only know about 12 words. So, once I've used the 12 words, the rest it just comes out, you fucking bastard, I'll fucking kill you! <laughs> so it doesn't go down too well, and they do say you're sacked, that's it. So, I've got to watch myself, and about 10 of the guys actually had on me back today, after what had been said today. As I said, I, I love working, I'm a sad fuck, I enjoy working. I go in there, when I start my shift, I burst all the way through and I don't stop until I finish. Then I come home and I bore my poor family. Sorry, honey. But I, I bore them about these bastards. And, but then you, you just hear Charlie there and you just hear Jackie. And they're proper, they're, they're proper people. They know how to say things. They know how to put the point across. But they're actually dealing with real shit. I just deliver letters and packets. That's all I do. I don't actually do that. I talk to my punters. I speak to them every single day. They all see me every single day. There's that big girl looking bastard. I got that. <laughs> told you to say that. Nah, I told you that. <laughs> but the fact is, it's not just you folk. We know you're going to back us no matter what. And you are already bought into this. You understand what's going on here. It's the public. We need to try and get this across. We need them to stand up. We need them to turn around and say, look, enough's enough. We're, we're, we're fucked with this. One percent of the... The population of the own 50% of the wealth, and we've got to fight for the rest of it. We shouldn't be fighting for that. It's supposed to be shared. I don't class myself as a communist, I don't class myself as a Marxist, I don't class myself as any of that. What I do believe in is a symbian society, because as we are, we're a symbian society. If somebody does something wrong at the top, we're affected at the bottom. And that's what's going on just now. And it's a really bad part we're seeing just now. I've never, I'm 53 years of age, and I've never seen the end like this in my life, what's going on. You're seeing what they're, de they're destroying every single industry to make sure they get the money. You seen Rishi Sunak when he was talking to his constituencies a few months ago and he was saying to them, I'm going to take money away for these poor areas because they fuck them and I'm going to give it to you. And then he gave 19.9 million to his own wee constituency, which is a leafy suburb down some place down south. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure. Sorry for my facts. And we've to sit there and accept us. So fuck that. 
And I did say fuck that. <laughs> so look. Sorry. Someone say something else. Anyway, um, they asked me to come up and they asked me to speak about it. Started striking in August. I've never been militant. Uh, we had the Southside Solidarity Group turned up at the Air Force strike. Didn't have a clue who they were. <laughs> and they're standing beside us. And I went, we, we weren't organised. And what are you doing here? And they started telling us why they were here. The likes of Eben. Where's Eben? There's Eben there. Everybody knows Eben? <laughs> there we go! And then they started, and then Chris, there's Chris. Chris is one of my customers. And I, I, I vaguely knew him, but he lived in Prince Edward Street, then moved into Torresdale Street. He's got his VE office there. I'm telling this. And then it turns out Chris is involved in living rent, and what a guy. The guy started this fuck. And I said, fuck again. I'm going to keep going. Every time I swear, she said, don't swear. Don't swear. But Chris is really talented. You see his photographs up there. He's got a big Hall of Fame up there, and his, the photographs are beautiful. They had mine in the corner right enough. I don't appreciate that, but Chrissy's is up there. Um, and you, you, meet, you start meeting these people, and somebody that, I was on a call a couple of weeks ago, uh, NUJ, and one of the journalists actually came up, and she's in her 70s or 80s, and she said one thing that stood out to me was, when they went on strike, he started meeting people who were genuine. He started meeting people who were actually honest. And he says in the camaraderie, the bonds, the friendship, she goes, I, I met these people 50 years ago and I'm still pals with them now. That's how this feels. I generally feel, I, I get emotional when I start talking about this. I tear up every single time. I go home and I tell the kids. My kids actually get involved in it as well. My daughter, my youngest daughter's up there on the wall. She was on the wee placard. It, it, it's amazing what it does. And you meet all these crank people. I, I don't know how to describe this. I need teachers up here. Where's Jackie? <laughs> Her last year. I freaked her out because as soon as she said her name, I know where you live. <laughs> she generally thought I was like one of these fucking. How do you know that? <laughs> so there's a tal. That was your posty head. But we need people at heart to come up because she, she knows how to articulate it. She knows how to put the point across. She knows how to sell it to people. The biggest thing is to try and sell it. We need people to buy into this when it could because, see, in about a year's time, I've thought nothing changed. We're all fucked. There needs to be a big movement here. There needs to be a big movement. So as I said, everybody here I know wants to be part of it. But we need everybody to get involved. We need the public to get involved. So start talking to your neighbours, start talking to your friends, start talking to your family. Let them know about what's going on in here. Because as I said, in 12 months time, postmen aren't going to exist. Teachers are fucked. The NHS... Is this... Sorry, I was nearly spoiled there again. <laughs> These people stood on the battlefields when COVID was going on. I, I, I delivered a lot of doctors and nurses and I seen when they went through in the first four or five months of the pandemic and the state they were in, the hours they were working, ill health they went through. One of the doctors I do know, he went through COVID three times. Once he actually got hospitalised out of it. And he's managed to survive obviously and earn in a decent ways because he's a doctor. But he's still working long hours. Yeah. He's still there for us. The fact is, he doesn't want to leave the NHS, he doesn't want to go private, he wants to stay with the NHS, he's there to help us, the public. Man, he's rich fucker. I, oh, fuck. <laughs> as soon as I start mentioning him, oh, I, the hatred that comes out, it's unreal, I don't like that, I don't want to be like that. But it's, that's what they've turned me into. It's not, it's not us that's done that, they've done that. They've fucked up all the way down this road, and then we've got to pay for it. We had to do it before, we've had to do it before, we've had to do it before, now they're asking to do it again. Enough's enough. And that's the biggest thing, enough's enough. Yeah. So that's what we've got to keep saying to people, enough's enough. Because once these services start going, if the NHS goes, if the teachers go, posties go, fire brigade go, don't like to say the polls. But you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. These services need to be there. It's a public service. This is why we pay our taxes. These fuckers haven't paid anything in taxes. I pay more tax than Amazon. I'm a fucking postman. <laughs> oh, come on, man. Yeah. yeah. Am I going on too long? I'm uh, not going. Yeah, I'm not going again. Then I'll wind up again. So look, dig deep in your pockets. I know you've already dug deep before, but dig deep in your pockets. Again, 
It's not charity. It's solidarity. Don't you just love that? <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm a children's mental health nurse. I work in the community. I work in a crisis team. So our, the children we see are most mentally unwell children. Um, I know when we think of children, we don't think of them as having mental illness, but believe you me, it's out there and it's, it's, it's really, really bad. I love my job and I love the ethos of my job and the potential that my job can have to help people. Um, but actually, right now in reality, that's virtually impossible. Um, I feel like I am building patients and carers' hopes when we see them and ultimately they get, end up getting put on a waiting list for at least 18 months because the NHS, NHS is so dramatically underfunded. So we're treating patients who are living in some of the most dire situations. So these kids come through to us because they have made an attempt on their lives. The reasons for that can be due to mental health illness but more often than not, it's to do with the social situations these kids are living in. We have to deal with children who are severely neglected. Their parents cannot afford to look after them properly. And social service, there's not enough social services and social workers to help them properly. Every day we go into work and we know that our patients aren't going to get what they need. And that's across the whole of the NHS, not just in my service. And that, that is really, really hard. And for years now we've been fighting for a correction in pay because we are losing staff, left, right and centre. We don't have enough staff at all. And we can't carry on like this. We will lose the NHS. And when we lose the NHS, we lose lives. It's as simple as that. And like Charlie said earlier, we're already seeing people losing their lives. And there will be more. And that's not what we came into the job for. On top of that, so we've got these families who are living in really, really poor conditions and cannot survive, don't afford to survive. And then we have the Tories turning around and saying, Oh, we've got an idea. We know what will save the NHS. We'll charge everyone for GP and A&E visits. These people cannot afford the bus fare to go to their GP and the A&E. How the hell are they going to be able to afford for any sort of visit, any treatment? But this is the reality. This is where we're going to be if we don't defend the NHS. we can all do something to defend it. Even if you're not a striking worker, we can do things to come together and fight this government. Because ultimately that's what we need to do. We need to show them that we hold the power and not them. Yeah, yeah. So, sadly, these attacks on people aren't just limited to workers and pay and conditions. They're are attacks, transphobic attacks, migrant attacks, racist attacks. This government will not stop unless we stand up to them. All of these issues affect every single worker, every single person in, in the UK. We need to come together, regardless of what that struggle is, we need to come together and fight it as one. So, I look at, I think about the... the, the the utter racism, there's not actually any other phrase for it, the utter racism from the Tories, and relate that to the NHS. We have relied for decades on migrant workers in the NHS, bringing their skills over so that we can offer the, the good care that we're meant to be given, which we can't currently give. Yet the Tories are hell-bent on making sure that we don't get those skills in our workforce, those skills for you guys, for everybody out there, so that we can save your lives. What we need is all trade unionists to start doing more to fight back. Do your part. And I know I'm, pre I'm preaching <laughs> to a bunch of people who are standing here, you know, you know, but we need to put it out to everybody. Talk to everyone that you see. You can be sitting at a bus stop, talk to them. Raise the, raise the issues that we're seeing. Get them to realise that if we come together, we can fight it.
Charlie McCarthy, I'm a, a nurse practitioner and I've worked in three emergency departments throughout Scotland and I very solemnly want to tell you that our emergency departments all on scheduled care in Scotland is now not safe. Be careful what you're doing, do not rely on us because the BMA are telling us that hundreds of people are dying every year because of long waits in accident emergency departments. Your NHS, the NHS that we fought for, that we rely on, it's your NHS, you pay for it, and yet it's been siphoned off. The Tories are making sure that they are their ruling really class friends throughout throughout the world are profiting from the NHS now. The gross underfunding means that there is not unscheduled care for you now. And that is to say that I have to advise you all to stop drinking. In all seriousness, I have to advise you to stop drinking. Fucking boo! To, to stop doing your sports, to stop going out on icy mornings, to stop doing absolutely everything that can mean that you can have an injury or an illness that required emergency health care. Because the reality is now that for the first time since 1948, we cannot guarantee you gold standard healthcare. We cannot even guarantee you adequate healthcare. The BMA are reporting that there are hundreds of deaths happening every year now, unnecessary deaths, because people can't get seen timelessly in emergency departments. I was lucky enough to get involved in my career in what's called the Emergency Medicine Malawi Project and I was taken out to Malawi because the Scottish Health Service realised how bad the Malawi Health Service was, that there was no accident in emergency departments. So I went out with some colleagues and we, with the Wellcome Trust who built it, and then we showed them how to run an emergency department. And we went there because there was unnecessary deaths happening. And now we are living in a country where the BMA are saying there is unnecessary deaths happening. That is where we're at just now. This Tory government are coming for everything that was won after the Second World War. I first got aware of, of how the politics of this country worked during the minor strike when I was a teenager. And I saw that how Thatcher isolated the miners and because of that she defeated them and then she wreaked havoc amongst the society. Drugs came in and life got difficult for everybody. They have not finished the job though. The job that we want to finish is happening now. They want our NHS. They want our welfare state, they want our pensions, they want to de take everything off that we have won in the future. This is the time to stand up, like never before. We have got to stand up now, you've got to save the NHS, you've got to save the welfare state and our pension and our holidays and our days off and everything like that. But the NHS is different, it's about giving adequate and the best health care for everybody, no matter how much money you've got. We're about to lose that. We are losing it. If you don't fight now, if you don't support these strikes, everywhere, the RNT, the GMB and everybody, they are fighting us. If you don't fight that now, you'll lose your NHS. Fight on. Thank you for uh, inviting me along to speak at this really important event. Um, I, I, I'm a member of the National Executive Committee of PCS 
um, I'm a civil servant, I work for the DWP, please don't boo me. <laughs> uh, I've been working for the DWP for 23 years, administering benefits to the most vulnerable people in our society. And we say cradle to grave, that is what we mean. We are delivering benefits to, from the cradle to the grave. And we are hearing heartbreaking, heart-wrenching stories. Now, this is the first national action that we've been able to call in, in almost eight years because of the anti-trade union laws, the trade, the trade Union Act of 2016, that has made it nigh on impossible for us to call industrial action. And that was brought in by the, the Tory government, a corrupt government that wants to that wants to destroy trade unionism, and we need to fight back on that. We got we, we got that, that threshold last year in a, a national ballot in 126 of our uh, departments. <laughs> we absolutely smashed that, and we showed that we are ready. We are fighting back. We have had enough. So we've got mandates to take out over 100,000 of our members, and that number is growing on a daily basis with member with people joining the union in order to take part in this action. And we're rebalancing in the areas that we didn't get the, that, so, so that they will be able to join us. We've taken a sustained target action in a number of areas, DVLA, DVSA, the Rural Payments Agency, some, in some parts of the DWP, and the Home Office, the borders, the Border Force, and we've been told that we are ruining Christmas, we ruin Christmas and that we're <laughs> disrupting, um, we, we're being disruptive, and we're not the ones that are doing that. Uh, we're, we're demanding that the government give us the pay that we deserve. We've, for a long time, we've not had an inflation-proof uh, pay rise. Uh, 27,000 staff in DWP, the biggest uh, department in our union, and 19,000 in HMRC, the second biggest, are going to have to get an uplift in April to meet the national minimum, minimum wage. Uh, it's actually 40% of our members are claiming universal credit. About half of our members are using food banks. That is a disgrace. That is an absolute scandal in this day and age. <laughs> but, but, we had a 126 page dossier that we delivered to Westminster of examples of testimonies of our members who are claiming universal credit, heartbreaking stories. And I, I, I'm well enough just thinking about it. It's just, it's, it doesn't bear thinking about. And that's our members, that's not the claimants. The claimant stories are even worse. We're also demanding that the government pays us back the 2% that we've been overpaying in our pensions. Now, there is a court case this week which our union and a number of other unions are involved in to get that money back that we are legally owed. And we want to protect our rights and our conditions and our jobs. So while we acknowledge that taking a day's action is not, <laughs> it's not financially viable for a lot of people, the target action has been paid. The, this day of action that we're taking on the 1st of February, along with so many other unions, the, the number of unions keeps growing as well, that is going to be a, a, a massive impact. So let's make Wednesday a day to remember. Withdraw your labour, show your support, join picket lines, join the rallies. Let's win this for all of our members. So daddy. Kenny for the Corporate Funeral Care the Coffin Factory. Uh, we're here tonight to show solidarity. Hi comrades. Hey. 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 Uh, I'm sorry but I've got my speech right now hey. because I'm not very good at this. So I only heard the last night that I was given a speech. So <laughs> there we go. Sisters and brothers, I'm proud to speak today on behalf of our Unite members at Corporate Funeral Care Govan, and I bring solidarity and support from our picket line and our union to you 
and to give our support to many other workers in struggle and taking strike action just now. I also wish to thank you, thank you to many of you here who have supported us. We have been supported through donations, we have been supported through visits to our picket line and through others raising our dispute directly with the cooperative group. Our struggle has been a cooperative, a collective effort demonstrating the best in the traditions of our movement. Thank you for a grateful workforce. For many of us at Funeral Care, this has been the first strike of our working lives. Previously last year, we were essential workers. We worked throughout the pandemic, providing a service that sadly was greatly needed by society at the time. Now in the course of living crisis, we like we have been forgotten, but we like many of you are fighting back. We are determined, resolute, and united. Yeah. Our strike action began in October and has continued now for over four months. We have stood in our picket line in the rain, the wind, the snow, I was going to say sun, but there hasn't been fucking rain. <laughs> Yesterday, we made a breakthrough. Through our action, our employer has been made an improved offer, which we will vote on shortly. This wouldn't have been possible without our action and without your support. United workers, we shall not be defeated. <laughs> Across our society, we are seeking our wages shrinking. We are seeing our public services under attack. And we are seeing tax rises on our pay. We stand here tonight to reject that we pay the price for a financial crisis that is not of our making. It is not the wages in our pockets that has caused the crisis. It is the greedy profits of the boardroom corporations and companies making record profits in energy bank and banking, in transport, in technology. It is time that we paid their fair share. Yeah. Yeah. We are here to demand change. We are here to, to demand that the real wealth creators the workers receive the fair share for our collective endeavours. We are demanding our governments make different choices. We are demanding world class and fully funded public services. We are demanding security and safety in our welfare system. We are demanding an economy for all. Tonight we stand together. Tomorrow we must continue to fight. Together for a better future. We must win together. I would just like to say thank you everybody that's here that has supported us through the last four months of our strike and from everybody at the Corporate Funeral Care, the Coffin Factory, we thank you all from the bottom of our hearts and hopefully everybody will get what they're deserved. Solidarity! from the Fire Brigade Union. Uh, our ballot closes this Monday, the 30th of January. Firefighters in the whole of the UK have not took industrial action over strike for over 20 years on pay. Enough is enough, we have lost over £4,000 in real terms pay cut since 2010. This isn't just a fight for our fight over pay, it's a fight against the Tories who are absolutely attacking the working class. Whether it's teachers, there's nurses, there's those within education, uh, right across the board, we are absolutely with you. I mean, we have stood on picket lines with you. Our ballot closes on Monday, and we are asking our comrades within the trade union movement to support us. Firefighters absolutely are at the end of their tether in terms of the cutbacks that they've had. Especially in Scotland, we have lost over a thousand firefighter jobs since 2010.
there has been fire appliances lying idle because we've not got enough firefighters to crew them. So this isn't just a campaign over pay for firefighters. This is a campaign over safety as well. So solidarity to all those workers. We've got on the picket line with EIS, UCU, Unison, Unite, GMB. And this is the moment now that workers need to unite. A rallying call to come together and show solidarity because our fight is your fight. So comrades, let's get together and show solidarity. Thank you. I'm a fighter in Edinburgh. I took my first strike action 20 odd years ago. And I know every um, worker finds it really difficult to take strike action. But trust me, firefighters find it incredible difficult to take strike action. We've been balloting for 12 weeks now and the ballot finishes on Monday. And trust me, we will have an absolutely astounding yes support for industrial <laughs> are taking industrial action and it's industrial action because we have been shot of over £4,000 in pay over the last decade. I've been a firefighter for over 25 years and I'm still under £15 an hour on pay. Absolutely ridiculous and it's a 42 hour week as well that we do. Weekends, Christmas, holidays, overtime, the lot, you name it. We are there. There's fire engines lying idle in every fire station in Scotland because we've not got enough firefighters to crew those. There's control rooms. We had eight control rooms in Scotland. Now we've got three. The majority of those workers are women. An organisation that's 95% men, the women are the ones that are bearing the brunt within our control room. So we are on the picket line supporting every other union as the FBU has always done. I'm proud of my union. It's a small union, but trust me, it's a fucking fighting union. Yeah. And we will be there on every other picket line. Our ballot finishes on Monday. Comrades, support us on our picket line. Solidarity. Yeah. Thanks very much, folks. You know, it's a... It's a great honour and pleasure to be invited tonight to the, the Glasgow Solidarity Strike Fund, you know. Uh, it's an absolute honour to be asked to speak. So, if anybody knows me, normally I'm in the, the front of the picket line with a, with a, a megaphone yeah. shouting uh, victory to the R&T. Yeah. You know? uh, so, this has been my, my forte. So, if I kind of uh, go around in circles tonight and tell you all about the, the dispute that we're in, I do apologise, you know. And the lovely Sarah that's standing in front of me, I'll never forgive you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I'll tell you a wee bit about myself. As I said, my, my name's Craig. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a catering manager. I'll be one of the, the talks that works through Glasgow Central. I prefer not to name the company I work for, if that's okay. Uh, I've been sacked once before, so don't, don't, don't fans have been sacked again. Anyway, uh, so obviously, as everybody knows, we're in dispute. And, uh, you know, first and foremost, I think my, my General Secretary, who has been a big part of the, the, the movement, you know, deserves a wee round of applause. Because without big lunch, we, 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 we wouldn't be here, let, let's be honest, you know. So a big thanks to my General Secretary, you know. <laughs> So, so about two or three weeks ago, we, we got from the, the RDG, which was a, basically a final offer, you know, except, except this, because you'll not get anything else, you know. So, previous, the previous offer was basically, a, a, and I'll give you a wee kind of a incline, of, a kind of a stuff they wanted to, to, uh, to get rid of, you know. They didn't want guards in the trains, you know, so, so guards, and, and it's quite fitting that we're talking about guards, you know, because... Only yesterday there was a guard down south who got stabbed twice for asking somebody for their ticket. But this government wanted to do away with them. You know what I mean? Absolutely shocking. Absolutely shocking. So, you know, not only that, so they came back, you know, we knocked, we knocked that back on the race. So they came out with, you know what, 
we'll, we'll keep the girls. We'll keep the girls, okay. We'll, we'll keep the girls, which is absolutely fantastic. You know, but what we'll do instead is we'll still continue to shut every fucking ticket office. Every ticket office. No, you shut every ticket office. What about the elderly? What about the infirm? What about people who just need reassurance? But no, they have to go and buy their ticket for a machine. It's not on, absolutely not on. I've got 12 hours rest in between shifts. But this new deal, we don't want you to have 12 hours rest. We want you to have nine hours rest. Wow. Nine hours rest. Now, I'm lucky for the fact that I live very close to the station. I live five, five six minute journey away. But there's people who live an hour, an hour and a half away from the station. But yet, they want them to have nine hours rest. Now, not only is that bad for my members and our members, this is bad for the public. How can how can I come into my job after working a 12 and a half hour shift and be expected to give the pain public the support and the help they need? It's it's not on, it's not on, you know. Pensions. Talk about pensions. So I know I don't look 52, right, but I'm not. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> I know you're all right. <laughs> Especially you, <that's> <laughs> You must be serious, but... <laughs> anyway, you know, I can take my pension in 10 years, you know, but this isn't about me. This is about everybody. Absolutely everybody. And do you know what? It's not about the RNT either. It's about every union here today because see if we don't stand together we stick together yeah. we're done yeah, yeah. we're actually done yeah. 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 moving forward we need to have coordinated plans with every union that's going to coordinate strike dates together yeah. you know we can be day here guys we can we can just bow and give in to this government. These Tory bastards. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what they are, by the way. They are fucking Tory bastards who who are want to fucking take everything off us. They want the rich to get richer and the poor to get poorer. And just to kind of, just to kind of give you a wee insight, yesterday, I was lucky enough, we had a charity night a, a few months ago for, for one of my, my, my members that we lost. And we raised a couple of grand, so we've been donating, uh, donating the money to food banks. So I was out yesterday and we took a whole load of, doesn't matter how much, right, but we took a whole load of food up to the, the food bank and I ended up speaking to a girl who worked full time, who worked in a shoe shop, who couldn't afford to feed herself. How bad is that? Really? This is a Tory government. Where, where else and when else have we seen this? Now, as I say, I'm 52 years of age. I've never seen that in my lifetime, and nor should we. You know, so I'm going to finish here. I think I've spoken a wee bit too much. But you know what? Solidarity to the working class. <laughs> I'd just like to start by saying solidarity to Pauline and up the nurses. That was just yeah. that was really hard. So, uh, my name is Christine. Um, I am a sociology lecturer in class, not the bouncer, as these lads over here. <laughs> <laughs> I, so I will be in a lecture of sociology class, and no surprise that I'm the, the UCU rep uh, at Glasgow, formerly a branch officer at the University of Liverpool. So, um, <laughs> so um, our dispute uh, at the moment that, that we're out for, we are currently in dispute over pay, pension and working conditions. It's been a long uh, dispute, as you've heard, uh, but just to give you kind of some insight of why we're out, We've experienced 25% cut to our pay, 35% cut to our pensions, and precarity in, our, in universities is rife. Not many people know the extent of that and the kind of contracts that people are on, nine months, seven months, three months, all the rest of it. And we've got um, almost 100,000 insecure contracts across university. 
And when you're from a working class background and you get a job as a lecturer, you think that you're set for life. You think that that's it, and you're not going to experience those rounds of redundancies and that industrial restructuring that affected your community. I'm from Greenock, uh, by the way. Um, every single year that I've had that job, it's been chipped away again and again, and the conditions have got worse. So since 2018, I have taken 104 days of strike to fight for those conditions. Um, now, some of them are the national dispute, but some of them have been local disputes, and we've won, and I'll get to that in a minute. Um, so, what I'm describing um, that, that I'm experiencing here is something that you're all experiencing, I'm sure, in various ways in the job that you've got, because this is ideological, it's not economic in any way. We know that, we know that our bosses in our sectors, they have the money. It's not about that. It's never about that. It's about greed. They're hollowing out, they're privatising, and they're prioritising growth over value, and <coughs> growth over life. Denise, condolences to you and your colleagues to hear about that. I mean, that's we're putting profit first, that's what happens, that's the injury to workers. And because it's ideological, we don't win against our employers with a clever argument, that's not what does it. We win with might and hitting our employers where it hurts. That's how we so we're about to take 18 days of strike action and we're reballoting while we're doing that and we're going to escalate to a summer marking boycott. Now, that's our leverage because that's what we do. We make degrees. That's how universities see us. We're degree machines. So know what? It's time to down tools. You're not getting that. Yeah. Not getting that. And, you know, that works. It works. When I was at Liverpool University, they were going to make 47 health and life science members of staff uh, redundant their job cuts during COVID. So um, it was, a, it was a millionaire manager's vanity project as well, just to make it even worse. And we took four weeks of strike action. We had a mark and boycott. We did a wage share so we could go longer when we got docked 100% of our wage for not marking. And you know what? We won. We got, those, we got those job cuts. 47, zero, zero compulsory redundancies. And in order to have that might that we need to win, you need community support to do that. That's what you need to do that. Popular support is great. It's great that we've got that just now, but that's not what wins disputes. It's not that. It's not my general secretary's Twitter account either. It's having, it's, it's having community support, workers supporting workers, tenant unions, trade unions working together to support each other. Fundraising nights like this, that's what keeps us strong and that makes sure that our employers buckle before we do. We need that community behind us. So get your money out your pockets, get it in a bucket, there's no more raffle tickets. Buy a strike and work at a drink. Get to your local packet line. Fuck the bosses, up the workers. This is a momentum moment for everybody and every trade union in here. This is a working class struggle that we will and can win. There's no doubt about it. This is about community activists, trade unions and members of the public standing together. This is a, a government that's trying to destroy the working class, use of the working class. We refuse to be poor anymore. We refuse to be accept nothing less. This is about a fight for the future, not just for us, but our kids and our grandchildren. And you know what? We will win this. And how do we win it? We win it on the picket lines. We win it in the workplace. And we win it by campaigning tirelessly. Let me tell you these three words. This is where we hold them. This is where we fight them. And this is where we win. Do we sit back or do we fight back? Yeah. The, the message is clear to them. They either stand with us or they stand against us. And if they stand against us, we have 
coming from the back, coming from every single one of them. For too long, we've been quiet. For too long, we've been quiet. But we've been Tom and the Chog and Tom and the Chog. And the sleeping giant as a wing. We are the sleeping giant. We are too strong in the UK. We are organising and we are determined. I've never seen so many people joining trade unions. So many people getting active and getting involved. And that's what this is about. We're marching and we're marching. Who are we marching for? We are marching for victory. Yeah. This is only the start of this. It certainly won't be the end of it. Victory to every trade union in here. I'm proud of everybody standing in front of you to do it. Uh, just now, honestly. I'm speechless because the speech, you've heard the stories in the workplaces and that's what it's about. Come and tell your story. If you're struggling, tell your story. But let's make it clear. We need to stand together. We need to continue to support each other. And that's on the picket lines and the workplaces. There's no time for divide and conquer or a chink in the armour. We march, we march proud. So I'm going to start with a finish. Solidarity, brothers and sisters. Continue to hold the line. Come on!